I recently had somebody ask how you can set up a sticky sidebar using generate blocks. So in this demo, I'm going to walk you through step by step how you can set up a sticky sidebar like you're seeing on the screen right now. And of course, I'll give you all the CSS you need to make this happen. So you can just copy and paste it and be on your way right away. So let's jump in. So inside this demo page here, we already have the hero section set up, which is just a container, the featured image, category, title, author, all that kind of information. Another little section that's nested underneath it with the sharing options. But what we're going to be concerned with here is the actual body of the post and the sidebar. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and set up a new container here to house all the body of the content. We'll go ahead and give it some padding. We'll say 60 on the top, 24 on the sides. And inside of that, we're going to set up a grid since we're going to have two columns here. Now you have some options here to start off with some pre-made. Uh, usually I'll go with 50-50 and then just adjust it as I need. So what we're probably going to end up doing is probably going with something like 66 and 33. So we have a little bit more space for the body and then the sidebar over here. Now I also want to go back to my grid and I want to set some horizontal gap between these. We'll say maybe 60 pixels just so they don't run into each other. So what we need here is some body content inside where the post is going to go. Just for demo purposes, I have some taco ipsum on my clipboard. I will drop a couple of those in there just so we have uh, plenty of content here to give us some uh, opportunity to scroll. Now we need to look at this second column here. So inside of it, what I'm envisioning is maybe like a featured post or latest post kind of thing, or maybe some kind of ad or call out to some other content on our website. So we're going to want to we're going to want all that information to scroll together. So in order to accomplish that, we actually need to stick a container inside of this container uh, in our grid. So if you look at the stack here, we have the outer container of this grid, this right hand side, and then we're sticking a container inside of it. Now this container is actually going to be what sticks and this is going to be the track that it sticks in essentially. So inside this container, we need to drop some content. So we might do like a heading and we'll do a, an H3 and we'll say latest posts. And then we can drop some links in here. So we can just say um, blog post number one, blog post number two, blog post number three, just so we have some content in there. Of course, you can link these. And if you're wanting to do something dynamic, you can do all that. But for the purposes of this, we'll just put some text in there for now. Now, also inside this container, we could drop even more containers. So if we wanted some kind of like card or something inside this container, we can achieve that as well. So we'll click on this inner container here and we'll drop another container. And just so we can see it, we'll give it a background color, maybe just a light gray, a little bit lighter so you can see it on the camera and give it some padding as well. So we'll say maybe 24 pixels and we'll say, um, I don't know, something like join our community and then underneath that we could have a button so this is just kind of set of setting the basic layout of what we need here we'll center align it and say you know join now and we'll just drop a link in there just for the time being okay so now what we have is essentially our setup here for the content on the left and the sidebar on the right now we'll go ahead and update this and take a look at it on the front end and we can see we have everything basically the way we want it, except none of this is sticking. So that's what we need to set up next. So we're going to have to set two classes on two different elements here and then write a little bit of CSS. Of course, I'll put all the CSS down in the description below. So the first one we need to do is this outer container on the right hand sidebar. And so this is kind of like the track that everything is going to stick inside. So usually what I'll do is go down here into additional classes under the advanced tab and we'll say uh, sticky container. We'll give that the class of sticky container since it's going to be the container that holds all the sticky information. And then inside this inside container that I've put all of our content in that we actually want to stick. We'll grab that. We'll go to advanced under additional CSS classes. We can do sticky element. And so this is going to be the actual thing that sticks. Of course, we can update that, refresh it, and we'll see that nothing has changed. It's still not sticky because we need to add our CSS. So we'll hop in here into the customizer and we'll start writing the CSS we need to make all of this work. We'll go into additional CSS. 
And here, the first thing we need to do is set up um, the sticky element. So we need to give it all the information it needs in order to stick. So the class we gave it was sticky element. So we'll do dot sticky element and open and close curly braces. And we can say position sticky. And then we'll do position webkit sticky just to make sure it's working on all the browsers. And then we have to give it some kind of uh, coordinates to stick to. So usually you're going to want to stick this to the top. So we'll say to the top, but we don't want it to crowd exactly to the top of the browser. So we want to give it a little bit of padding or breathing room. So we can say something like 48 pixels. And you'll see this isn't doing what we expect it to do. And the reason is, is this outside container isn't tall enough for this to go anywhere. So technically this is sticking right now, but it's sticking to a container that's just as tall to, uh, to accommodate this information. So that's why we had to make the sticky container uh, class. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do sticky hyphen container. And then inside of that, there's the class that generate blocks makes, which is inside GB hyphen inside hyphen container. And we can open and close brackets on that. And what we want to do here is do a height of 100%. And so this is going to stretch that outer column the entire height of the space that's available here. So now we should see when we scroll, this whole container that we set to sticky is scrolling with it. So we'll go ahead and save this here. I'm going to make this a little bit longer so we have a little bit more of a dramatic effect. We'll drop in one more set of taco ipsum. I don't think it went. There we go. Update that here. And we can close out of this since we're done with our CSS that we need. And we can see now as we scroll, that sidebar sticks to the top about 48 pixels uh, from the top of the screen. And if we had more con more content, you know, other sections below, uh, underneath this section, it would stop sticking once it reached the end of that there, since it's stuck inside of that container. So that is how you set up a sticky sidebar inside Generate Blocks. If you're looking for even more content on how to use Generate Blocks and Generate Press, I recently did an hour-long live webinar where I walked through building out an entire page using these tools. You should see the card popping up on the screen right now. Hopefully that will help you out.